I'm Julie Douglas. Um, I'm a senior lecturer at AUT in Tamaki Makaurau. What do I love the most about university, I suppose, is it's an open place. It's a place where mostly you can be who you want to be. You can create your future, and both students and staff. I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty magical place. Things get created there. It's, it's full of life. It's full of hope. Some of the issues with funding we've seen in recent years is a, a cutting of student support. Um, you know, there's an overall goal to increase Māori and Pacifica success at university and, and in politics and in the Wananga. Yet we've seen um, axing of specific funding into support and we've seen more generic funding. I think that has resulted in um, it being harder for those students to be successful. I think we've seen uh, a loss of staff uh, and there's been a, a no hire practice in place for some time to, to try and keep a lid on those costs. And so workloads have increased because staff are having to pick up the extra work. And the jobs expanded uh, with little um, acknowledgement coming back through, through the, any remuneration. As lecturers, we have expectations, which if we don't meet, we risk being performance managed out of our jobs. You get caught in this place where if you don't have enough research outputs, you could lose your job, yet you're not necessarily well supported always to do what you need to do. And so, as I explained, my research work, like many qualitative researchers, requires an enormous amount of um, preparatory work, uh, which won't necessarily result in a journal saying, we love your work, we want to publish you. Uh, and you might be back at square one. So we have these very um, um, quantifiable outputs, yet our work doesn't kind of neatly tick boxes to meet them. So it's, yeah, it can be a challenge. Since COVID-19 came into um, the sector and, and devastated our international students who are on campus, uh, that's been problematic. We've experienced an extraordinary contraction in um, financial resources. Uh, we also very quickly, and I'm talking about within 48 hours, have to switch um, one teaching delivery mode to another. And the pressure was on to not just do it, but to do right by the students. You know, I think while the university said, oh, you all are able to do it, I think the biggest anxiety for a lot of staff was, were we going to do it to a standard that we were happy with, that students would get a good educational experience. Uh, and, and I think that's been for two years been the pressure. Nobody knows how to deal with that. We've all been doing the best we can, but I think there's a very high level of you know, COVID fatigue about how do we then keep moving forward with that expectation that we're providing a quality education. So I had a lot of students who were still overseas who I was uh, having to do classes at weird hours. Uh, so work-life balance, while some aspects were good, um, others were really much poorer those outcomes. The, the day got longer and longer because students wanted to be, uh, there was a lot more need for pastoral care. I think that in the tertiary sector we still see um, significant issues around pay equity and I think women are still um, uh, essentially disadvantaged in the sector because of processes, promotions, the way work is assessed, the way people's work is um, uh, is valued and I think for women there's still a significant issue when we look at the statistics of who gets to become the professors and who are in senior management. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, reports into several universities recently around institutional racism, uh, cultures of bullying, which um, we have not yet seen any really significant um, processes to address. So I think they can be dangerous places for some people. It's, it's, it's a problem. And these are meant to be the institutions who are the critical conscience of society, the ones who are training our future workforce, the ones who are going to mould our future society and its values. And if we can't get sexism and racism and bullying under control, I think we have a long way to go.